Welcome, everyone. It's good to see you all for our uh, September SIMPA meeting. Hope everybody's having, not having, but had a good summer. I guess in some people's minds, the summer is over. Not in mine, though. Um, so tonight, uh, Tony Matt is here and is going to be doing SharePoint for us. Uh, he's a return visitor. We're glad to have him back. Um, next couple months, only just tentative plans. Uh, nothing's pinned down exactly right now, but uh, traditionally, October is uh, recruiter's night, and so we're trying to line that up. Uh, I've got some ideas for November, December. I think I need to talk to my consulting partner over here, Eric. And you did tell me you had an idea, didn't you? For uh, Brad has the idea. Oh, Brad. Brad, Brad and I discussed it. All right. We have some others for. All right. So, do I need to help I you? Would, or? I would get Brad. Brad, okay. He's got all the contacts. Anyway, <laughs> December usually we call Hackers Night, so we try to do something fun, man. Uh, and does anybody have any questions for me? Uh, if you're not involved in our uh, mailing lists on the Simple website, sign up. They're free. They help you find out things that are going on. It's can also be the discussion forum for people have questions. Uh, we have special interest groups on uh, small business. We have one on uh, various kind of activity levels of uh, open source and one on security. Um, anyway, that's my pitch. I will uh, turn the meeting over to Tony. At 8 o'clock, we take a break. We get some pizza brought in and take a little social time. So uh, if you can hang on. All right, so I got my own blog here, and I put tonight's presentation on my blog where you can link to. So if you have computer-connected internet right now, you can download the PowerPoint and follow along. If not, um, I will go and have materials on a lot of stuff I'm presenting tonight after I show you guys first. So tonight's going to be a lot of hands-on. I'm going to show you stuff live and in action rather than talk to a PowerPoint slide for an hour and a half, two hours. So um, if you go to this post here and click on this link, I got a link to my OneDrive. And right now I have the PowerPoint, but I'll have also, like I said, the other materials here. So so where, where's the post? It, so you go to your... Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, JennyMadden.com. Yeah. So let me open up my presentation here. I present from the cloud. So yeah, if you go to TonyMan.com, uh, it's the latest blog post I have out there. So thank you. So thank you for all coming out tonight. So I'm here to talk about how to leverage SharePoint with out-of-the-box features. So tonight we're going to be describing what each of those features are how to extend the out-of-the-box features, then use creativity, imagination, how to take a data that you have, transform it into information so it could be used, like on demand. So I'll be explaining, showing a lot as we go on. And it's open forum, so anytime you have a question or something while I'm doing something here on the, on the demo, feel free to raise your hand. Yes. On, on Tar Online? SharePoint Online. Yep. This is this, uh, uh, applicable to SharePoint 2010, uh, which is the foundation standard enterprise. SharePoint 2013, foundation standard enterprise as well. SharePoint 2016, um, there's no foundation. There's no free version. They, they finally zapped it. So it's standard enterprise and everything you can do on sh uh, SharePoint Online. In fact, tonight I am doing uh, off my own Office 365 subscription. Um, I am a, enough of a geek that I have my own E3 plan. Um, I have to justify with my wife each year because it's $240 renew, so uh, there's some housework negotiation that happens. But um, I just want to get a gauge of everybody's level in terms of SharePoint. Um, would you consider yourself a beginner to novice? Raise your hand. 
How about intermediate? Good. Any SMEs? Okay. I just want to make sure because I, I have to gauge uh, where I can take information here. So my quick uh, bio, uh, my geek name is Crouching Tony Hidden Madden. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Tony Madden. Uh, you can, I'm on LinkedIn, and you know, I just gave you a link to my blog, and that's where I'll have tonight's materials and uh, supplemental information. So I've been at Intelligrated now Honeywell past year and a half, two years now. Uh, I was in consulting for a long period of time. Uh, I implemented SharePoint in a variety of ways. I've been in a company as small as five people, and the largest customer I ever worked with was Great American Insurance down in Cincinnati. So I migrated. There are 58,000 users in their extranet. So I've, I've done everything from small to large. Um, in terms of verticals, I've done a lot of manufacturing, engineering. I've done work for the Reds, Bengals, uh, state, county governments. Uh, I was a DOD contractor, so I've done SharePoint for Wright Patterson Air Force Base. So I've, I've seen SharePoint implement a lot of ways. So what does that mean? I have lessons learned. I have things of what not to do. So if you have a question and thinking, hey, I might try this, I'm happy to answer that, see if it's a good idea or not. Because uh, I've been in a lot of projects where I had to rescue people from themselves. So, so tonight's agenda, we're going to talk about SharePoint lists and document libraries. You may know what they are. I'm just going to describe what each piece of these predefined things can do for you. So like Legos, you have different size Legos. You want, I'm going to give you a description of what each Lego piece is, like a list in a library. Then from there, I want to show you a very powerful feature called Views. Yes, you have Google Docs. Yes, you have all these other systems that are free. There are so many great features of SharePoint that I don't want to go into the whole night explaining that, but one great feature that people don't know about is Views. So I'm going to show you how to create a view and do some crazy fun things with views uh, with lists and libraries. Next, I'm going to show you how to set up a site page. So it'll be a way to take your data that you have all this good information, put it on a page where it can be used as information so people don't have to pick and find on where to find and look up information. You present that. So. This is where we're going to have Murphy's Law here. Um, I'm taking a big risk tonight, so I'm doing a demo, a live demo, so we'll see how it goes. So during my demo, I'm going to go through a typical life of an IT department, but I'm just not going to be a department page where you put your own personal calendar for your members of your team, to put vacation and so forth, or a personal document. It's actually going to be an IT department page where it's a self-service area for your customers. So we're going to switch hats instead, not SharePoint serving your own personal needs, but SharePoint serving your customers. Um, so I'm going to show you how to build a really great system maintenance calendar, something I just built for uh, my job here a couple weeks ago. I'm going to show you how I did it with out-of-the-box features, and it turned into a very powerful, useful tool. I'm going to show you how to create a knowledge base inside SharePoint. And also, I want to show you how to use and set up a shared department's contact list. And there's going to be a couple other things I'll show. But um, also, during this demo, if you have any questions about, hey, how I would do this or that, let me know. We can play while we're in here. So with SharePoint, what makes it so powerful and why it's so popular, it, it's, a, it's like a canvas. It has all these things, and it's up to you and how do you want to use those parts? How do you want to use those blocks? And sometimes it's almost like writer's block. You get creativity kind of being stagnant and you kind of need something to get you jump started. Well, there's a really good blog out there about how to use SharePoint with your company strategies. And I felt this blog is really cool. And I highlighted some of the features that they talk about. One is strategic planning on how to capture and work with ideas and processes. So that's part of the whole strategic planning. The second thing out of the five here what I thought was really powerful was the communication hub. And that's what we're going to demonstrate tonight. Not using SharePoint for your own personal gains on how you work with data, but how can you make that data transform the information and have people work with in a very efficient manner. Uh, 
Another good idea was monitor employee engagement. So with SharePoint, with adoption ideas in the past when I worked with customers, it's like, we got this SharePoint, we spent all this money, but nobody uses it. What can we do? When you go out and ask these people, it's like, why don't you use SharePoint? Well, first of all, some people just purely hate it. So you got to get past that. But once you get past that, they're like, we can't find any, anything because everybody's dumped the file share into SharePoint, and we do a search, we can't find it. <coughs> So that's when you come up with some information architecture ideas on how to make things more presentable and stuff like that. So, um, but once they start learning how to work with SharePoint and that type of information, be fast, you'd be surprised on how fast SharePoint picks up in their organization. Uh, next thing is manage innovation. And I thought this was a good idea because like most organizations, we got people going out and signing up for a free Dropbox or a free Google and they'll take company information or some ideas and put it on the personal or work with the vendor or work with the customer, all of a sudden that great innovation is not in the company's control. So setting up SharePoint in a way is almost creating a bucket where it's more attractive to say, hey, go out and don't use Google Drive and this and that because you want to use this as a better alternative. One, part of our company policy of keeping our data secure, but two, this is how we can work with your customers on sharing it out and do those type of things. So this is how you can manage innovation with those ideas and projects that spin off of Dropbox and all that. And finally, training initiatives. Uh, people spend a lot of money for LMS systems or I don't know, all these various ways to create some unique ways of creating survey monkey quizzes and stuff like that where it's, it's loosely coupled. Well, SharePoint's very innovative on how you can build surveys and um, you can host videos and, and stream them out and those type of things. So SharePoint is a very good area to host internal training initiatives. There's many other ideas, but these five ideas I thought was very unique. So this gets the ball going. So when you write a paper, you got to think of a topic. And I thought this was a good idea to, of uh, getting those topics out there. So getting to know your building blocks. So this is how SharePoint was born. It was a web-based file system. So instead of having a file server where you had to be at home and VPN in, then go to your map drive or create your own map drive and get that document, it's a quick way to open up a browser and get that document in a secure fashion. Second thing is lists. Uh, lists really took off as well, where you can, instead of putting things in an Excel spreadsheet, putting that Excel spreadsheet in SharePoint or in another system, people have to open that um, file in a client-based application to still work with that data. List allows you to work with that tabular data in a browser fashion. And you can do all sorts of things with calculations and views and whatever. And finally, another thing that really took SharePoint um, to the next level was search. Um, it, was, it was an out-of-box way to get search indexed right away. Um, it came with its own proprietary SharePoint search component back in um, SharePoint 2003 and SharePoint 2007. Um, with SharePoint 2010, they introduced the Bing technology within SharePoint on your own on-premise li licensed version as well as they bought a product called Fast Search, which um, they bolted on as a separate license with SharePoint 2010. But now with SharePoint 2013, especially with SharePoint 2016 and beyond, Fast and Enterprise Search is now all one search, and it's included with their license agreement. And now, anybody out there in Office 365, I heard somebody say SharePoint Online, now they have a new thing called Delve. Have you guys heard of this product? It's like search on steroids. So what do I mean by that? It allows you to search, but in a visual map way. So if you're inside Yammer, if you're inside OneDrive, if you're inside Exchange, and if you're inside SharePoint, inside of Delve, you can do a search, like employee manual, and you'll find the different footprints of employee manuals. It might take you to the HR SharePoint site. It might take you to a training video that's posted on your video portal in Office 365. It might take you to a Yammer thread discussion inside your Yammer. And it visually allows you to see the permissions of those files and BI to the next level. So hard to describe it verbally. You actually got to see it in action, but good things are happening in uh, the search area within SharePoint. 
Uh, also, at the beginning phase of SharePoint, Microsoft was built on .NET and continued to uh, be the primary framework to build applications on. So you can build custom solutions. However, this is kind of frustrating the SharePoint development community because they've had three different application developed models and now they're going to a fourth one now. So in the past, you always had to have a SharePoint server, install Visual Studio, do your SharePoint goodness, compile with .NET and server controls. Then they said, you know what? We don't need that many server controls, so now you can develop local in your Windows 7, Windows 8, compile and deploy into a single file called WSP. It's called a farm solution. You give it to an admin like me, I take it, test it, I deploy it. Has some server controls, but very little. Then SharePoint 2013 with Office 365 SharePoint Online, they're like, we don't trust any developers. You get zero server controls. So now you, you got to compile based upon a loose methodology in Visual Studio and SharePoint way of compiling code, but it has to be JavaScript heavy. So you had to learn people from C Sharp, heavy C Sharp, now they have to become JavaScript developers, which is not a bad thing. Keeps the job market, skill set's good. But now they've gone too far now. Now it's pure client side object model. So um, you don't even interact with your SharePoint site at all. You have to deploy what's called an app store. And then from there, your app scene is doing some crazy things. So SharePoint developers are, have to learn three or four or five careers in the past 10 years. So um, it's going to continue that way until Microsoft figures it out. So we're going to talk about lists now. What comes out of the box? Yes, I'm sorry. Tom, Tom, just what you were saying there. I think that's the main reason why some people steer away from SharePoint, because they develop apps and situations Yeah. And uh, I know, you know, in my own case, I sort of abandoned uh, doing stuff for that because you never knew what they were going to change next. Absolutely. Yeah. So, but I think that's why it's sort of a hard push sometimes for SharePoint to come back to what they want. I totally agree because one, you got to re-architect your applications that you put a lot of heart and blood and sweat and tears in, and refactor into the new model. You don't know if some of those features will work or not. Business users like what you built. Now you're going to this new model that may or may not work or those features might change. But on the positive side I've seen is that a lot, I work with a lot of co-ops, good and bad, um, but a lot that come out, they're really good at JavaScript. They're really good at basic web development and mobile development. So I'm able to take a 22, 23, 24 year old and make them a SharePoint developer on a project fairly quickly versus in the past where I have to have a training budget and at least three to six months to break their own stuff before I'll let them introduce to the enterprise environment. So um, I think it's, it's getting faster adoption, especially now uh, with SharePoint 2016 that just came out in May, their Microsoft's really pushing for a hybrid mode. They don't want people to go away from pure on-premise stuff. What will make their license model really happy is that they, you have one foot in the cloud and the other foot in on-premise, so they get you on the server licensing model SQL, but they also get their O365 dollars. But their code will work in both environments. Another thing that uh, bothers me too is the fact that uh, Edge doesn't really support JavaScript. Uh, depends which one you choose. Angular is actually pretty good, but it depends if you're using HTML5, the latest JavaScript standards, you're going to be okay, but I've seen where um, if you try from the old JavaScript libraries, yeah, they won't function as expected. Good question. Have you both made comments about trying to settle down and not keep making changes? And this is kind of a it's actually getting faster. Um, that's the scary part of what I'm, I'm dealing with right now. Because um, SharePoint, especially with Office 365, they're introducing a new feature every two to three months, and they purposely do that to keep the stockholders happy and keep bleeding edge against Google. So um, if you follow, I highly recommend if you're a Microsoft user in your environment, follow the Office 365 blog. They post the latest feature that's coming to the market in a one quarter ahead cycle. 
One example is Planner. If you guys understand, or have you guys seen Planner? Have you guys used Trello.com, Kanban board? Yeah, I'm a big Trello user, so. Um, ignore the task guy. Here's my own personal to-do list. So you can create your own. It doesn't, it's like a Kanban board. So you create your own lanes. Okay, then you create your own cards. So inside the cards, you can have your own activities on that particular task. So you can, if you have multiple members in here, you can include them in a discussion, put due dates, checklists, it's great stuff. Then once you're done with that, you can move it from your own board to board, the lane, and all this other stuff to complete it. And you can keep count. So Trello's been around for a few years. A lot of developers, in, including myself, you know, we love using it. However, Microsoft came out with their own called Planner. It, it, they introduced that. It might be coming out in April this year. Then Microsoft introduced it to my company's environment in June. If you were, if you were on the Trello user list. Yes, and my admin is, he loves to cause pain for the rest of us, so he, he signed us up for that. And all of a sudden, all these people wanted it. And all of a sudden, it's like, oh my gosh, I got all these other projects. Now I got to stop what I'm doing and train. So that's the good and bad with what Microsoft's trying to do now. They're releasing new features, but you got to stay. You got to keep up with it, and uh, there's more on the horizon. Are they, are they the back end still? Something you said it changes different languages and different features and stuff. Is that kind of settled down now, or is that stay kind of? The development platform is going to be solidified with what's called CSOM, the client side object model. That's going that's actually settled now. They're trying to put some more maturity around that now with the web APIs that's and stuff. Back back no, uh, what's also uh, changing is the authentication model. So. Um, OAuth has been the, the go-to of choice past couple of years with SharePoint, but now they're going to talk about taking identity management to the next level. What that is, I don't know yet. So, um, actually, let's take a look. Oh, that's my personal one. Bear with me. I gotta bring in my demo environment anyway, so I might as well come in here. So while I'm in here logging in, um, stop me if you heard this before, uh, what I'm about to say uh, with task lists. Um, Scott, you maybe you have, but maybe it's been a while. So with SharePoint, I've been a user for a while, so I thought about four, four years ago when Office 365 came out, Thought it would be a good idea to use it for home use. Um, so, to manage my own bills and tax stuff and all this other stuff. So, um, my wife, I kind of told her that we're using it, but I didn't tell her all the features that we're going to do. So, I thought, you know what? It'd be a good idea to create a task list. So, I created a task list and I put some tasks in there for me. It's like, you know what? While I'm in here, I'll go ahead and create a couple tasks for my wife and uh, for her to follow up on. And I, I didn't tell her this. So. You still married? <laughs> some groveling. But. So. I put a couple tasks in there. You know. Hey. I, you know, I know. This could be cool. So you could do this and that. And I, I put the task in. And I signed it to her. And so she got an email. Saying Tony Madden assigned this task to you. Here's a due date. So. You have the ability to accept or decline it. So she declined the two tasks I gave her, and she added some more information to it. What I could do with the <laughs> so if you work with task list and SharePoint at home, be one. <laughs> yes, okay. All right, I'll bring in my demo environment here in a second. We'll go back to my PowerPoint. So out of the box list. So, there's um, pre-built stuff that you can work with uh, that is already built for you. So you have what's called announcements. So if you pick an announcement list, it allows you to quickly put a, a title of your announcement, the subject of your announcement, and when do you want that announcement to expire. So that's all it does. Next is contacts. So a contacts comes out of the box with a lot of information to fill out. 
very, I think only two or three items are required. What makes the contact list very popular, you can sync it to your Outlook. Mm. So there are three SharePoint lists that work great with Outlook. One is contacts. Two is tasks. Just be careful who you task. <laughs> and three is calendar. So that is a great way to organize, centralize multiple people. That way you can update, let's say, a SharePoint calendar. You can put an event out there. It will sync. If there's 20 or let's say 40 people sync to that calendar, 40 people will now get that event that you put in your single SharePoint list. Or if you have a personal outlook, you can drag it over the SharePoint and 40 people can now see what appointment you, you put in your own Outlook and shared it to the team. Yes? Are you saying Outlook, do you mean does Outlook like the desktop app or streams or what? It works with your desktop app. Okay, what about streams? There is a way with SharePoint Online and Exchange Online to make an Exchange calendar and a SharePoint calendar overlay. On premise, I ain't gonna lie, it's a bear to get. And it still requires the developer to compile some stuff to make it work. But on, out in the cloud, it works seamlessly. What version of Outlook? Um, it works with uh, Outlook 2010 and above. Okay. Good question. Next, discussion boards. Um, your traditional, you know, 1990 way of creating a topic, people, you know, adding comments and having those healthy discussions. Those are still there, active, doing well. They have a list called Link, so it allows you to create an area to create a bunch of external, external, internal or external links. Next, this is kind of, they, I don't agree how they labeled this. It's called promoted links, but you have what's called tiles in SharePoint 2013 and SharePoint 2016, and I'm going to show you how to create those tonight. Um, it, those tiles are really good if you have a, a phone or a tablet, and if you don't want to click around and try to get a negative, what I call negative four font on a hyperlink, you can create really interactive buttons. Uh, I put discussion boards twice, I apologize. Uh, next, calendar. Uh, yeah, like I said, calendar is a very powerful feature. I'm going to show you how to work with one tonight called a maintenance calendar. Again, tasks, um, very powerful feature. It also links in with your uh, Outlook. A great feature I like in SharePoint 2013 and SharePoint 2016 I'll probably do a demo of it tonight it's called Project Tasks. Anybody work with Microsoft Project? Okay. If you have a project task list, you can sync it up with your Microsoft Project 2013 and above. Pretty cool stuff. So what does that mean? You can create a project with your Gantz and resources and sync it to your SharePoint Project task list. That's good stuff. So you can have multiple people in there. So you have a central way of having uh, a view of what's happening, what's in motion. A really good feature, uh, I've seen people take this to the next level and actually not purchase a service request system or an IT ticketing system called issue tracking. Um, a lot, it's an out-of-the-box feature. Um, by the way, you can extend all these features in these lists I'm talking about, and I'll show you how we do that tonight. But it's a good, get you started with an issue tracking list. Um, if you don't have the money or time or budget to create your own service desk ticket system, this is a really good alternative. Next, the good old survey. I call it the good old survey because Microsoft has not changed the code since 2003. And I, there's some features I wish they would change a little bit to take it to the next level. But no, Microsoft keeps porting the same code from 2003, 07, 2010, 2013, and 2016. It's the exact same code base, but it still works. Uh, next, ex external list. So this way, uh, like I mentioned, Office 365 blog, this is the way you can subscribe to the, those external lists or RSS feeds and pull them into your site, like a, your own updated news feed that you want to track very particular sites and so forth. Next, the custom list and data sheet view. What does this mean? You can create a SharePoint list choosing this predefined uh, pre-built list to allow you to create a list that works like access. Well, actually, you shouldn't say it works like access. It is access, 
but with an ActiveX control inside your web browser. So what does that mean? If you like Access Database, this is a great way to work with an Access Database without having an Access Client application on your desktop. Pretty cool. So if you don't have Access or you can't afford it, no problem. If you have Access to SharePoint, you have Access to the list, you can create your own way to manage and work with data. And what's really cool, you can apply TSQL, which came out with Access 2013. I'm not sure if you guys know that or not. You can do some basic SQL Server commands against an Access database, 2013 and above. And with the custom list data sheet, you can actually apply your TSQL knowledge on a limited basis, of course, of what you can do inside there. Finally, you have a status list. So you can create your own. Oh, yes? Question on your data sheet. Uh, you said it was an ActiveX control? Yes. That is correct. Well, it does work in Edge. It just uh, it might prompt you to have the site trusted. Hmm. They have that extra security feature. Yeah, so Chrome, Firefox, nothing else to work with that. Chrome, yes. Firefox, I don't know. I'm not sure how many people still use Firefox. Seems like Chrome's kind of taken over the market the past couple of years. So you guys use Firefox. <laughs> Microsoft supposedly supports it, but I haven't used it. Okay. Good. I just know Firefox and especially Chrome, they don't support Flash. Well, not Flash, but uh, Silverlight. And all in why, Microsoft still loves Silverlight, but a lot of the other browsers and stuff are dumping it, except for Netflix, they still use Silverlight. Yep, that's the answer. Uh, status list. So if you want to create KPIs for projects you're tracking or whatever you want to I have a green, yellow, red indicator, that's the list for you. And if you don't like what Microsoft predefined, uh, pre pre-built for you, you have the custom list. So when you create a custom list, it adds one field called the title. A title column is in every SharePoint item known to man since 2001 and it's always going to be around SharePoint 2016. You can't delete the title field. You can hide it, but you can't delete it. So but if you create a custom list, that's the one field you get. Then from there, you can build off what you want. So if you guys want to, during or after presentation, I have the official Microsoft article on what every list is out there, what's about. So, so since we talk about SharePoint and why it's kind of, I wouldn't say superior, but what kind of differentiates it from Google and all the other stuff, one of the big reasons I like SharePoint versus going to Google Docs and using the Excel spreadsheet, whatever Google Docs, whatever it calls that, I can create a list inside SharePoint or a document library and I can apply different views. So it's a way to work with the data that you have in a more meaningful way. You um, sort by groups, you can filter by groups or columns and display very specific information. Um, you can also do what's called paginate. Uh, I think by default, it's 30 items per page. You can increase, decrease that however you want to. Next, document libraries. I'm sure you guys, if you guys work with SharePoint, I'm sure you upload a document or you've been told to go into a document library to go get something. So a document library, all it is is a place where you can hold things. It can be a document, Excel spreadsheet, PowerPoint, Access. It can handle video, which is called an asset library. Images, um, files. I, there's a way to block file types in SharePoint, one, oh my goodness, uh, one file that will tear up a SharePoint system is CAD drawings. Mm. Holy moly, I work with a lot of engineers and I've had, it's, it's create, it's, I actually give them credit for all the creativity. They try to put their five, six gigabyte files into my two gig upload limit that I have and how they get around <laughs> that. Um, but then also, have you guys ever worked with CAD drawings? It's like a Visual Studio project. You have a single project file, but if you open that up, it explodes all these other files. Oh. SharePoint hates that. So, 
I want to do yourself a favor tonight. If you see a file co type called DWG, block it. They will cause you SharePoint heartache in all versions of SharePoint, including online. So next thing you can do, which I like with SharePoint, you can create your own columns. And we're going to describe what these columns are. You can create different columns for lists or libraries. So obviously what this is, what you can see here is a single line of text, which gives you 254 characters. You have what's called a multi-lines of text, which allows you to create a whole text area. So if you want to type a piece of war book in here on your content list, feel free to. Um, you can create your own choice field. So if you want to add attributes, this is where information architecture comes in. So you don't want to upload a bunch of various documents. You want to make them meaningful. So people don't have to decide how to title the document. They shouldn't think on how they should put a document into SharePoint, and they shouldn't think on how to get a document out of it. So you try to put precursors ahead of time. As they upload, you can ask them, is it an accounting document? Is it a finance document? Is it a secret document? You can ask all these attributes, then from there you can take other actions based upon what you told them to choose. Next, uh, you put number columns, currencies. Uh, you can add your additional date and time fields. Um, you can do a lookup. So you can look up other SharePoint lists or other SharePoint libraries and make it part of your list and library that you're working with. Uh, yes or no checkbox, obviously. Uh, person or group. So you can look up inside your own Active Directory. Um, if you want to assign, let's say, a task list. That's not your spouse. Uh, <laughs> You can then say, all of Active Directory, I just want maybe find this one person and assign them a task. Or you can create a SharePoint group. So if you don't want to depend on Active Directory, you can create your own SharePoint group and add two or three people in there. Then you can look up that group saying, you know what, out of the 50 accountants, I've got my special accountant team. I'm going to put four people in there. I might assign them one accounting person to that task. Um, you can link to a hyperlink or a picture. You can do calculations. The KPI task outcome. Another powerful feature people don't realize, SharePoint's great at talking to other business systems. I'm not sure if you guys know that. SharePoint is very powerful to work with data within SharePoint. Go get data from Salesforce.com, Oracle, anything that's database driven or has web API, SharePoint can talk to it. Why don't you give the service account the right permission? You can go get data, bring it back, and you can work with it again. You can workflow it. You can, if it has documents in there, you can pull that back and do maybe some approval workflow or content management. And you can process the information and send it back out there. People keep asking me. I'm, I'm, I'm a hardcore SharePoint admin, system engineer, but I've also been doing development for a while. But they're like, Tony, don't you think system administration is dying out? I say no. The reason I'm saying that, because everybody's talking cloud. You know, why do I need an on-premise ex you know, exchange when you can do an exchange online really easy and don't even have this? This is where I disagree. You still need an expert to do system integration. Mm -hmm. You still need an expert to understand security. I'm not talking about patching the server on-premise. I'm understanding putting a security model out in the cloud. Doing the backups out there. People think it's in the cloud, it's going to be safe forever. Yeah, get a virus on premise in OneDrive and watch that virus go out in the OneDrive and tear you up. How you need an expert to manage these systems. I don't care if it's on premise or in the cloud. So I actually have a presentation, the evolution of a system admin. And uh, I don't know. I'm, all, I'm way off topic. So, anyways, here's a link here on how you can uh, understand all the columns that you can do inside SharePoint. Next, um, how do you create web pages with no code? So I don't need no stinking co-op. I have a WYSIWYG editor within the browser, and I can really create some very powerful SharePoint pages by adding web parts that I'm going to show you how to create tonight and adding um, some views and um, putting them on a page. So demos, enough talk. So our goal tonight is we're going to create an IT department self-service site so customers that we're providing service to can go out and find information instead of calling you and calling you, say, how do I do my job again? 
The site should be visually appealing in terms that it should be self-explanatory. And if we don't achieve that, people are going to get frustrated because they have to go to your site and find information. You might say, you know what, you can't do your job because there, I have an IT policy, but it's in this site, go find it. They're like, you know what, I'm not going to look for your IT policy. I'm going to go do it myself. So if you make it very self providing, self-navigating, people actually apply that policy. Now, they may choose not to follow it, but at least you can say that they got it now. So, It'll eliminate the frustration. So tonight, I want to show you how to take a calendar, add a couple more meaningful attributes to it to make it customizable for you. Next, we're going to create a couple of views from that calendar. So you're going to have the nice, pretty <laughs> monthly calendar view. Then we're going to take that same data and make it into a list view so you can see what events are coming up. And finally, we're going to create a page where you're going to have a contact area. Say, so you know what, you can contact me. If you have any questions, here's my email. Here's our hours of system maintenance. And here's our SLA for that. And also, here's a link to see all of our past maintenance items that we did. So if you have a question what we did in July, you can go back in time and see this. So, I want to show you how we're going to do all these various things off a single maintenance calendar. Actually, a, ma a calendar we're calling a maintenance calendar. Next, I want to show you how to create a knowledge base. Why I feel this important? It causes less emails to me. I got other things to do. If I have to tell 50 people how to do the same thing 50 times, bad on me. I should tell at least one or two people once or twice. Create a knowledge base article. Person three through 49 or 50 contact me. Say, hey, I got, I got an idea. Go here. They can go read it and go conquer. Next, I want to show you how a department contact list works and how to sync to it. And if you add or take away a contact list, how it uh, updates everybody's outlook that sub uh, subscribe to it. Um, an idea I came up with this afternoon is how to organize a learning materials document library. I get a lot of questions all the time. How do I, how can I use SharePoint? Well, we have a plural site subscription. We have a lynda.com subscription. That wasn't enough. I'm not sure if you've ever been to those two sites, ladies and gentlemen. There's a lot of material out there, and they still like to have their hands held. So this is where I like to do some extra screenshots, extra time to build how to use SharePoint, and I put in this library. So I'm going to show you how to organize this library. So it has their how do I do this question answered ahead of time with information architecture. And tonight, I have developed a, uh, a SIMPA development training site. So it's off my Office 365 subscription. So I've done a lot of Microsoft licensing presentations as well. So I am a valid E3 license user. So I can go in, set this site up and all that. There's a little asterisk with that license agreement with all SharePoint Online. I'm allowed to share it externally if you have an Outlook.com, if you have a Skype. Um, I think it now allows Facebook. So if you want access to my training site for SEMPA, let me know. Email me at Tony at Madden.net with Outlook. Uh, I think even Gmail. So Outlook, Skype, Gmail, Facebook. Email you me your email account, whatever. I'll grant you access to the site. It's a sandbox. You can go and play, destroy it. I don't care. But uh, you'll have access to this after this meeting. So references, what I talked about for the PowerPoint slides, some strategies, out-of-the-box lists, and columns. Questions, comments, concerns? All right, that concludes my PowerPoint. Let's go play. So let's open this up. Now, as this site comes up, if it comes up, you're allowed to say ooh and ah. I actually made a SIMPA site tonight. See? Got a logo here, and this is just an out of box SharePoint, but we're going to play now. So, I want to talk about this maintenance calendar I've been talking about. So, let's get it going. I like a cooking show. I 
pre-baked, pre-built some stuff, so I'll go ahead and open that up. Seems a little wonky here. SharePoint 2016 is a little bit different here, so I bear with me. It has a new look and feel. Hey, anybody been in OneDrive for a while? Mm -hmm. SharePoint 2016 in SharePoint Online has adopted the look and feel of OneDrive. Ooh. So that's why the views are different than you're used to seeing with SharePoint 2013 and earlier. But it's the same thing. So I don't want you get anybody get nervous with me tonight. So it's the same thing. Still a document library and list. It's just a different view of looking at it. So the Office 365 that's out right now, is that SharePoint 2013 or is that SharePoint 2016? If you had Office 365 prior to the 2016 calendar year, your SharePoint site will be in SharePoint, or I'm sorry, yeah, SharePoint 2013. You have the ability within SharePoint administration, bring it up here, I'm going to show you the Office 365 SharePoint admin screen. All my sites have been upgraded to uh, SharePoint 2016, but you would have the ability, let's say I wanted to upgrade my IRM demo site. You have the option of clicking upgrade the site collection, or you can do a delayed notification. Say, you know what, I'm going to be notified in 30, 45 days that I would like to update to SharePoint 2016. I'm just too busy right now. But you can, instead of doing all your sites, Microsoft, which I recommend and agree with, is you upgrade one site at a time. I have yet to hear something fail. I've heard the upgrade process is really good. As long as you follow the CSOM process, because Microsoft does not support client-side controlled developed solutions, which is that single WSP file. And I'll go in with what I'm talking about here. So I have to go back to my demo site. <coughs> so what does that mean? So let's say I tell a co-op, hey, you have an old version of SharePoint 2013 Visual Studio 2012. I need you to compile me a SharePoint application. Go. I want it done by lunch. So at 5 o'clock that night, because you know he has to you know, mess around and do what co-ops do and compile at 4 o'clock, um, they give me a, a solution at 5. So in here, uh, actually I've taken it out now. Okay, under web designer galleries, there's what's called a solution area. But if you click on solution area, it allows you to upload that WSP. But, uh, Microsoft did a good job. It's part of the features that we talk about, how they keep changing this thing. Um, they've taken that out now. Uh, they took away the solution gallery. Oh, I was one site down. Here it is, solutions. I stand corrected, I was wrong. So on the root level of dev site, here's the solution area. So I can upload that WSP file, if I had one, and I click OK, it would uploaded. But Microsoft has a saying, if, if it feels your code's not trustworthy, it will not allow you to activate it. Hmm. So how do you make your code trustworthy? You have to give it to Microsoft and they have to test it. So you would upload your solution and once you upload it, you have to go here, you have to go to admin, And you have your own support area inside your Office 365. You gotta you gotta fill out a ticket. Oh, they keep changing the screen here, but you fill out a ticket. Say, hey, I got the solution. Need to look at it. If you like it, activate it. If not, I guess I'll have to go see some model. So that's how Microsoft is is hanging on to this until December of 2016. So. If we have code 
they'll they'll support it till then. But if I ask on January first of twenty seventeen, that that support or that tuition area will be gone. So, good question. All right. Any other good questions? I'll go back to the demo. You are not doing IT unless you cuss a little bit. That's my point. All right. So back in here. <laughs> All right. So in here, I have a maintenance li uh, library. So I'm sorry, maintenance calendar. So I actually created this calendar by going and creating, again, Microsoft makes things confusing. So they have what's called apps. If you have SharePoint 2013, SharePoint 2016, they're called apps. If you have SharePoint 2010 or earlier, they're called lists. But you also have lists. So um, <laughs> this is where it gets confusing. So under apps are those predefined things that I told you about. So you can create, you know, announcement, contact list, all this other goodness. So I used a calendar. So I created the calendar like this. And I'm going to say Tony. Tony's calendar. I'm going to copy this. So you might think, hey, there's this advanced option. What that? What is that? Well, let's go ahead and click that. The reason I copied it, because lessons learned from last experience, is that it gets rid of it. So I paste it back. So the only thing it allows you to do is type a description. And if you want to allow other members to be part of your calendar. So I'm going to click no for now. But it allows you to add multiple people like to an exchange calendar. Whoever had an exchange question allows you to do that same type of thing in SharePoint. So here is a calendar, which out of the box calendar that you're, you're used to. Like I said, there's three SharePoint lists that sync with Outlook. Calendar is one. So if you click on the ribbon calendar, this is how you create and sync it to Outlook. So if you click this, it's going to ask, allow, and this will be a one-time prompt. So once you do this, it will sync to your Outlook calendar, which I'm not doing. That's my work laptop. But this is how you can do that. So I'm going to go back. To my content, and I have a maintenance calendar already built. And you can see I've got colors. Ooh, you're not. Okay. With these are called calendar overlays. So I can create a color based upon the category I wanted to choose from. So I out of the box with calendars you have holidays, meetings, and I really think you get anniversaries for a, a work environment. I don't know why, but you have those type of things and so forth. So I decided to get rid of all that and I put my own categories. Again, it's a maintenance calendar. So I want users to know when I'm going to do Windows Server patching or I'm going to run a special backup operation. Or I want to show you I need to add a new category called networking. Maybe the network guys is going to take the Cisco router offline Saturday and do some maintenance. But I want you, the user, to know this is where how to get that information. So, oh, another cool feature uh, with uh, all SharePoint lists and document libraries is the alert me. So you can actually, uh, what I call stalk, certain uh, SharePoint areas. And you can subscribe to, let's say, this calendar, how you can get this information if you want to text you, email you, and what type of notification do you want for that change on that list. And the frequency. Um, this is the key. Um, if it's a very active document library list, if you like email, it will um, email you. But you can do a daily summary. You can pick at, maybe you want to summary at the end of the day or maybe a weekly summary at a particular time. So that's a pretty cool feature. So let's say I need to add another category. So on my maintenance calendar, that's why I named it, so that's the default. I added a category called patches and I added a category called backups. 
Now I want to add another category called networking. So to do that, I need to go to the list property. So inside my ribbon here, I have what's called list settings. So I'm going to click that. So this is the under the hood of a document library or lists. So it allows you to see the settings, um, allow you to do these other type of management activities of your list or library. And uh, there's a way, well, not with the list, but a document library. Um, let me show you that. I told you tonight I'm going to show you tips and tricks. Here's one. Oh, crap. I don't have it turned on. Anyways, there would be a feature here if I enable it called email. So what does that mean? Let's say I have an attachment and I don't have time. I don't want to take the time to open up a browser, go to the site, click upload, find my document, upload to SharePoint, then move on to the next tab. You can set up a document library to listen for email. You can need because of the SMTP protocol. But anyways, now I can go to Outlook and say, you know, Tony's documents at, you know, whatever I just said, SharePoint.com. Put my attachment or attachments, and I can send it off in an email. SharePoint will accept that those documents, except for DWG. You know, always block those. Bad, but nice little feature. Let me go back to my maintenance calendar. So I'm going to go back to the settings. So in here, I have the columns of my list. Okay? So a lot of these are out of the box. Um, I chose category to modify. So category came out of the box. I didn't like what was in the choices, so I created my own. Because I can do that. I'm an artist. I'm a SharePoint artist. And I want to enable more imagination. So, I'm going to create a item called networking. I want that to be a maintenance item. So, there's different types of cho uh, choices. So you can do a uh, drop-down menu. Uh, but for this particular one, I chose radio button. Because I want users to get a visual of what choices that they have without doing an extra action. Um, you can do check boxes where you can do multiple items, but I don't see myself doing networking and Windows system patches at the same time. So, um, yeah, so I chose radio. You can predetermine uh, these three or allow users to fill in their own. So if those three things aren't there, they have the ability, if I choose yes, to fill in a fourth item, they choose to. Uh, I'm choosing no because I want to stick with my three. Or you can predetermined. Say I want Windows system patches to always be the, the primary choice. I'm going to click OK. So now I'm going to show you this real quick and I want you guys to take a break and eat some pizza. So I'm going to click event, new event, create a title. Uh, location, uh, the date, uh, make it next Saturday, 9-11, and those are three choices now, you can see my new choice networking, so I want to keep as, and as I told you, the Windows default, uh, Windows system patches with default, like Outlook um, events, you can make this an all-day event or make this a reoccurring event. Um, these same attributes are there because, again, you can sync it back to Outlook. And I'm going to click Save. And look at that. It's green. It has the title, and I can hover over it and uh, yeah, get a quick preview of what that is. So if I click on it, I can see what's going on. All right, before we start jumping in, we'll go ahead and take our 8 o'clock break. Eat a little bit and uh, we'll pick up here at 8 10 ish.
and uh, I'll start using a SharePoint page I talk about and how we can build this into a maintenance page. So we'll take a break. Okay, we're going to get started back. So, if you would like more free SharePoint hands-on training and presentation and all the goodness, there's a really good website. It used to be called SharePoint Saturday, but now it's called SharePoint um, Events or SPSEvents.org. So it allows you to see events that's coming up. I know for a fact there's one coming at, up at the end of October. They haven't posted it on the site yet. It's free, I think. It's tentative for October 29th, and it's at Great Wolf Lodge in Mason. It's just it's not posted yet, but keep an eye on this SPS events. Um, it will be posted here, and then from there it's how you can register even though those are still free events, still have to register, so they have a heads up of how to feed you and make sure you have enough free goodies and all this other stuff. So, what's that? No, it's a local user group driven thing. Um, if you have a need to go to Beijing, it's one event out there. Uh, it's throughout the world. Um, if you need, go to the UK, Barcelona. Okay, back at it. <clears throat> okay, so I want to show you how to do a view. So you have the default uh, view of I created a links list. So it allows you to create <coughs> hyperlinks with the predefined columns, any notes. I added this thing called category. So it allows me to group links how I would like to see them. However, you can create and group these however you want to. But I'm going to show you some cool features with views. So I'm going to create a view where I'm going to group them by the link category and it's going to do a count. All right, so I have one view in here, it's called all links, and that's out of the box. So I'm going to create a new view. So I'm going to click create view. And it has all sorts of choices here. So you have a standard view, calendar view, remember that access view I told you about, how to work with the data sheet. Uh, data sheet is just a pure web HTML5 data, um, data in, data out. This allows you, allows you to do all the TOSQL and all this other goodness. Gantt view, and obviously if you have, oh geez, okay. There is a tool set out there called SharePoint Designer. Has anybody heard of it? Okay. Used to be called Front Page, 2003, oh, yeah. Front Page 2007. Mm -hmm. They renamed it SharePoint Designer. My nickname for it is SharePoint Destroyer. <laughs> the reason is the tool set's too powerful for what you need to do on a basic level. It's very easy to screw up your entire site collection. When I say site collection, anything that says site slash this first level here, that usually starts with a site collection. It's too easy to screw that up. So, like fire and guns, be careful with SharePoint design. Now, I, I tried looking for it the other day. It looks like they've, they've taken it off. So have they gotten rid of it? Or? SharePoint 2013. May it rest in peace. Microsoft is no longer supporting it. So there won't be a SharePoint designer 2016 and, uh, and beyond. Also, there's a very popular tool set, if you guys heard of it, called InfoPath. Mm -hmm. um, again, it's one of those non-developer type of way to create a very powerful web form to kick off other input entries or actually most importantly kick off a workflow. Well, that is deprecated as well in, Share, in uh, SharePoint. 2016 and uh, um, beyond. But Microsoft will support InfoPath, I think they extend another three years, so 2026 now. So if you're really, really tied to that InfoPath, you can keep it. 
just there won't be an info path 2016 on the bottom. Now, Microsoft has not announced what their replacement is going to be, as well as SharePoint Designer. So, yet to be determined. But SharePoint Online and SharePoint 2016 will still work with SharePoint 2013 Designer. Again, it's like guns and fire. Be careful. <laughs> there, there you go. So, can can you create workflows without SharePoint Designer? Yeah, uh, Visual Studio. Or a great, great tool set. I'm going to promote them shamelessly. Anybody heard of Nintex? I love this. This is the cat's meow. Uh, you can create fantastic, powerful workflows within SharePoint. It will go out and talk to SAP, Oracle, Salesforce.com. It can go out and talk to social media. It can talk to other. It's fantastic. Also, it has a great alternative info path forms they have what's called Nintex forms so it's a way to use their tool set again you don't have to be a developer it's all WYSIWYG GUI create all these powerful forms and workflow so you can still I still like SharePoint Designer to do pretty advanced workflows without knowing C Sharp or JavaScript so man I'm way off topic so I'm gonna create a view now so I can create a standard view, which is a pure blank. But I'm going to create something off the all links view that's already there, and I'm going to rename it. So I have the all links view, and here's what's already chosen for me for all links. But I'm going to call it something else. I'm going to call this, uh, this is from my own Visual Basic days. I'm going to call it a view, a VW. You can name it whatever you want. I'm going to call it home page links. But I'm not happy with how these things are designed. So I'm going to take the type out. I might keep the edit. I might keep the URL in there. And oh, I'm going to do a group by too. So I'm going to keep that. Never mind. So next, what I'm going to do is uh, show you what's a group by. So I can sort. Let's say I want to sort by the link category. So if I choose, I guess I can. So in here, I want to do a group by. So I want to group by. do type for now. I wanted to group by IT link category. I don't know why it's not showing. But anyways, in here I can filter quickly of the type of Microsoft and it does a count of one and as a result it shows me that. And also if I create multiple views this is how I can get to them quickly through here. Or if I go to a list, I can also drop it. If I have lots of views, I can create lots of views from here. So now I want to add this new homepage link. All right, so now I'm, I modified the view to only show permanently the Microsoft category, okay? Now I can empty that and go back to and just show, I think I picked IRS. But I, you see how it forces it? It won't even allow you to choose that. So now I have forced this view called homepage links to only show Microsoft, okay? Now let's say I want to add it to my homepage. Now I want to make... Again, we want to make our department IT site self-serving to our customers. So I'm going to add links over here to the left-hand side. So I'm going to go to Page. I'm going to go to Edit. 
So you have what's called wet part zone. So I have this one defined area here. I got a defined area here, and I have a defined area here. So I want to add it to this area right here. So I'm going to go up here in the ribbon, click insert, <coughs> add part. An app part is stuff that's created or you created or a web part that are out of the box tools and configuration. So I want to add something I created, which was the IT link. So I'm going to click that, click add. So by default, it put the default view of showing all the links, but maybe I want to show the view of only showing Microsoft links which is that view I created. So I'm gonna click edit web part. So now I'm gonna go into the configuration of this web part and you see it's check mark versus this <laughs> one and versus this one. So it gives me the property view of that web part. So in here, I'm gonna go in here and you see that view I create called homepage links. It's gonna warn me, it's gonna change the view differently for everybody. I'm gonna click okay, cause I want that. And also, I don't want users going in and adding their own links. I only want them to see links. I don't want them to do anything. So I'm going to remove the toolbar. Okay? Now you see how I created the list called IT links, but you see how it's, I, I concatenated it? I did that on purpose because in SharePoint, it's bad to have spaces because it does what's called percent %20. So that space actually adds three characters to your, your URL string. And in SharePoint, you have a thousand character URL um, string limit, so it takes away from your budget. So I can concatenate a lot of stuff. But now it's an appearance, so now I can separate the appearance of the title without changing the list property. So now I put that space in there. And let's say I want to just have a border around it, but I also want to keep the title. So I can say title and border. There's all these other features you can do, which we don't have time to go into, but click OK. So now you see that I have it grouped by Microsoft and does a count of one, and it shows just the Microsoft category of the Microsoft homepage. So when I click Save, now I have an area where people can go and get to that link. So Now let's talk about building that maintenance page while I'm running on time here. So going back to the maintenance page. So I have the maintenance calendar. We added that category called networking, correct? Okay. Now, I want to add another col uh, color and make it an attribute inside here. So the first thing I have to do is create a view to networking. Because right now I have a view to Windows patches and I have a view to backups. So now I have to create a view for networking. So when I go to calendar, I have these views already. I have a view for backup. I have a view for Windows system um, patches. So I'm going to create a new view. And I'm going to repurpose one of the views I have already. I want to repurpose backups. <laughs> so I'm going to click backups. And I'm actually going to call this called networking. Sorry, that keeps popping up there. So you can create what's called a personal view or a public view. A personal view, let's say you have a task list. You can create a personal view to only see your tasks, and nobody else will see that view, obviously. Um, same thing with calendars and stuff like that, but 99% of the time you're going to create a public view. I'm leaving all of these defaults the default. Until I go to category. I want the category to equal networking. Sorry, I keep showing up here. Okay. So when I click OK, you notice now um, there I have no events that have the category networking associated with it. I haven't created one yet, so that's why it's blank. So I'm going to click on the title so I can get back to the main. I'm sorry, go back to the main view. So now I need to add a color association to this. So I'm going to click calendar, I'm going to click calendar overlay, and if there's a lot of steps involved, don't worry. If you go to my website, to my blog post for SEMPA, I'm going to put detailed instructions on how to create your own maintenance calendar in your own environment. 
So in here, I already have two calendar overlays called Windows Patches and Backups. What does this mean? All it is allows me to choose a category with a color. So I'm, you're only allowed up to 10 categories. So there is even a shortcoming with uh, uh, calendars with SharePoint 2013 and SharePoint 2016, and you only can have 10 categories. So you only have 10 colors to choose. So you go to New Calendar, and create networking. It's not really a new calendar, it's a new category for my calendar. It's a SharePoint calendar, or I can link it up to an Exchange calendar. We have, actually had that discussion a minute ago. Description, you can put someone here and here. And here's your colors. And these are the only colors you get, you can't pick any other. So pink is available. I'm going to choose that. That's good for networking. Yes, for networking, you have to be happy. Because to me, any networking folks in here, I love you, but zero ones are boring. IPv6, oh my goodness, that's to me, that's painful just talking about it. So if you want to do that for a living, go for it. Don't make it brown. Yeah, that's right. So in here you got the web URL and you got to point to the SharePoint calendar. Even though it's already there, you still got to tell SharePoint to go get it. So you have to hit resolve. Don't know why. And now you see it magically appears now. So I wanted to keep it in the maintenance calendar. Remember that view we created called networking? It's there now. Hmm. So you click networking. We want to choose the option always show and click OK. And now we have the category networking along with your other two. And it's in pink. So I'm going back here, maintenance calendar. And there it is. It's on the right hand or left hand side. My other right. So I'm going to go to events. I'm going to test it. And an event. Uh, Cisco party. Location. <laughs> I don't know where they're based out of. But. Oh, they're at based out of San Francisco, aren't they? Yeah. All right. They're sent in Seattle anyway. They have to do remote stuff. Upgrade. <laughs> so I'm going to choose networking. Click save. Oh, I made it a whole week, huh? <laughs> Sorry. I was going to say the whole week. I don't remember if we worked in there for a while. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> They're gonna pull an all nighter. There we go. You can hover over and see it now. Okay. This is a good start, but now we want to make it more informative and customer user friendly. So now we're gonna create a maintenance page. So how do we do that? So we're gonna go in here. To, I call it the sprocket, and there's probably a technical term, I don't know. I call it the sprocket. And I'm going to go to site content. Even though this is SharePoint 2016, it's the same stuff in SharePoint 2013, same stuff in SharePoint 2010. I have what's called site pages. So I'm going to create a page. So I'm going to go to new. I can create one here. Or. I can go to File, New Document, and create one here. I'm just showing there's multiple options inside SharePoint. Or there's a third option, SharePoint Designer. Open up SharePoint Designer, go to this list. Inside SharePoint Designer, give you an option to create a web page, or a wiki page, or a web part page. But like I warned you, fire and guns. All right. So I'm going to create what's called Maintenance Page. And see how it made it ASP.x? And I didn't have to compile it. I just, it does it magically. So I'm going to click create. And there it is. Now I got a page. So what does this mean? I want to add my stuff to it now. So I'm going to click app part. Oh, before I do that, I don't like the design of this page. I'm going to change the view of it. So I want to change the layout. See how I got one big box? I don't want that. I want two columns. Because I remember how it said, I'm going to create an area where it's going to be a contact me type information. So I'm going to create an area where they, how they can get in contact with me and so forth. Gosh darn it. Then here's actually where I'm going to put the calendar. So I'm going to go in here. App part. 
maintenance calendar, click add. Okay. But you see how it's this color coded stuff? Well, I don't want that. I created a page or a view called color coded. <coughs> color coded calendar click OK and there's our pretty colors so people can and once they understand and they keep coming to the site they can visually know that um, backups are going to happen Windows patch is going to happen and a networking event is going to happen because you're going to train them on colors you know <laughs> so next I want to add some content in here so I'm actually going to use an out-of-the-box web part probably there's three or four very popular web parts. This is one of them called the content editor web part. So it's under media and content and called content editor web part. I want to click add. So in here, I want to add content to this. Let's say, okay, uh, contact me. So I'm going to click contact me, but I want to create a hyperlink. I want to do an email. So I'm going to go into insert, do a link, and I'm going to do from address. This is where you have to know a little bit of HTML. So you have to do mail to uh, Tony at Madden. It's my site, so I can have my own personal email. I will click OK. You see now it's hovered. And see, it has this mail to here. And uh, that's how you can make it email you or a hyperlink or something. But this content editor property is going to be there. So I'm just going to say uh, contact me or contact information. They know in this area they'll contact me. And that will work. And click OK. Let's see. So now I got a maintenance calendar, and they can scroll through uh, other items. And they have a contact me. But let's say, hey, Tony, I don't want to look at just the now and try to look at this visually, what's going on. I want to see what's upcoming. I want to see if you have maintenance items of September, or I'm sorry, October, November, but I'm only seeing stuff in in the, the September mode, which is the default. They want to see what's coming up in the next 30, 60, 90 days. So, okay. So, like cooking, I already predefined this view. So, I already created a view for that scenario. I call it forecast out. It's probably not proper, but that's why I named it. So. It allows, it's, I took the view called all events, allowing me to see all the events, but you see how it's kind of blah. I took this all events and created a new uh, view called all maintenance items. I customized it just to make it more pretty. But I also added an attribute to look ahead in terms of dates. I'm sorry, I forecast out. This is the one that allows you to see uh, dates. The other view I want to show you is I want to allow to see if any maintenance happened today or in the past. So I actually did backups this morning and I completed them at lunch in my imaginary company here. Um, but I want to show you that you saw all the events I had, but it's only displaying the one that's in the past. So let me go to the one that's forecasting. So, to show what's in the future, it's a trick. So, click Modify View. Should say a trick. It's a development activity. So, you have this filter, and you have a great help section uh, learning about filtering items. And Microsoft did a great job with this link. If you go out to this link, it shows you how to filter. So, I want to show items of the start time which is greater than or equal to in open bracket close bracket today and 
I want to show things in the future. So if the end time is less than or equal to today, plus add 30 days. But let's say I want to make it 60 days out. No problem. Click OK. So since it's today, it's showing this. So let me go in here and modify. So you guys trust my logic. What what time do I go to? 8.45, 9? All right. Just let me know so I don't run you guys over. Let's save. See, now it's gone. So it does that filter. So it's going today, and if I had an item in the next 59 days, it would show. If it's 61 and above, it won't show. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. This why views are good versus the other systems out there they can do for free on the web. That's why SharePoint's powerful. Okay, so now I want to add this future thing. So I want to go to my site pages, maintenance page. Now I want to add it right here. So I'm going to go to page, edit. Click right here, click insert, the app part, because an app part is something that's already created by SharePoint or created by me. A web part are things that are there, you can then extend it and do other things. But I already created this, so I'm clicking app part. So I'm going to maintenance calendar, click add. Now, you see how I added this calendar again? I'm going to change the view. So I'm going here, edit web part. I'm going to change it to that forecast out. And there we go. But see how it says maintenance calendar too? Because it's actually the maintenance calendar. It allows you to know visually this is maintenance calendar one, maintenance calendar two, but it's the same look up to that same calendar item. So I'm going to go in here and change the label so I do not want my end user to add maintenance items I'm already working hard enough I don't want them to add more work for me. so I want to take away the toolbar say upcoming uh, maintenance next 60 days Okay. okay, so I want to highlight what this is. Again, this is SharePoint Calendar. This is a different view to that same data, but it's in a text list format, so people can visually see what's going on. But it's the same thing. So this item, backups on the six. Oh, it's already past due. Ah, so this is what's upcoming. So that's what happened in the past. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I want to show my users, okay, I got these upcoming, but now I want to get a list of what's happened in the past. All right, no problem. <coughs> so I'm going to go in here, and I already built that. So I want to show you how I built that. So in here, I created a, a view already called all maintenance items, all maintenance events, excuse me. So I'm going to go to the list and modify this view. And I'm going to filter start time is less than or equal to today. But I might just say is less than today. Okay. All maintenance items. So I'm going to go back to my page. Sorry. I'm going to show you how we're going to link this on our main page here under our IT links. Oh, crap. Sorry, pages. Bear with me. Okay. Maintenance page. 
I misspelled that. Excuse me. I misspelled. All right. But anyways, I want to add now past events under here. So I'm going to go to page, edit, add this view here. So I'm going to go to insert, app part, uh, maintenance calendar again. Then I'm going to go in here, edit. All maintenance events, take away the toolbar, appearance, past, main. <coughs> maintenance events, click OK. So here's what's upcoming, here's what's done in the past. And here's a visual way of seeing what's happening this month. All off the same calendar SharePoint item. Different views on how to work with that data. <clears throat> Questions, comments? Would it be something that you'd be useful in your environment? Cool. My team loves it. Now they got ITIL in the mind. So now I'm building this workflow for approvals and it took I thought it was going to be a quick home run. I'm going to get a maintenance calendar. We let our end users now. Now my team wants to take it to the nth degree. And I said, I told my team, you don't like procedures and processes. Why are you doing that now? Because they said, we got you doing it. So, <laughs> figures, so. whatever. I get paid all the same. All right. So, any questions so far? Again, all this was out of the box SharePoint, just like Minecraft, just like Legos. Took some creativity, imagination, and instead of you working for SharePoint, you're allowing SharePoint work for you. That's the goal. All right. So my next thing I want to do is how to create a knowledge base, um, which is going to be really easy. I want to create a subsite because there are already oh, what's called uh, site templates that already have predefined stuff built. I'm going to use a feature called the blog. Why am I using the blog for knowledge base? Because it allows me to encapsulate into a post, create categories, allow people to give me stars and ratings, and I can see views and all that, and it's searchable within that area. So just understanding how the blog works and just knowing my own blog, I thought it makes sense to make it a knowledge-based thing. So this is something you can work in your environment with SharePoint 2013 and above, and if it's on cloud or out on premise. So I'm going to go into the sprocket. And uh, site contents. And I when you have content, you have subsites. In SharePoint 2013 and earlier, you have your contents here and subsites underneath it. So in SharePoint 2016, they changed it here a little bit, but it's the same thing. So you click subsites. I already created one called Knowledge Base, but for tonight, I'm going to create a new one. It's dead. Why not? So I'm going to click new, subsite. I'm going to call it uh, KB. Copy. And why is this bad? I gave you guys the tip earlier. I'm seeing if you guys pay attention. Space. Space, correct. This is bad in SharePoint because it puts a percent 20 in it. It's hard to develop against because as a developer, you're dependent on web APIs to make calls to go get information or put information in the systems. And you'll, if you have to always account for percent 20, you're always going to have errors and it's a pain in the... I don't have an issue, so I'm going to go with that. So there you have uh, Simpa, KB. But I want to create a blog for this new site. Remember how I told you how Microsoft with SharePoint 2013 and above work with Microsoft Project? There is an awesome site collection template called the Project Site Collection Template. If you want to create a subsite, a test around, I highly encourage you to look at this. It's an entire site collection just for projects. It is wonderful. Um, but for now, we're going to talk about blog. So I'm going to use the same permission as the parent site, but I can create a super secret knowledge base. If I wanted to, I'm not. And I'm going to create a link to it. So I'm going to allow people to see it on my parent site. So I'm going to click OK. 
Now it's going to pick up the default theme of blue because it's a subside. For time's sake, I want to keep it blue, but if you need to change the theme, you can go in here and change the look. If you want to change the colors, you click on one of the templates and this is how you can change your colors. There we go, we'll make up red. Alright, we'll try it out. Uh, SharePoint messages are getting funnier. What was that knowledge site you're talking about? I'm sorry? The knowledge site you mentioned? Yeah, this is, this is what I'm creating now. I'm using the blog template, and then I'm creating a knowledge base off this right now. Okay. I'm just changing the color. Now it's all a pretty red. So let me go here. So now it says welcome to my blog, but I don't want that. So I'm going to manage the post. I want to delete that. So now, let's go back. See, so there's no blog post right now, but since I'm an admin, I get these tool sets of how to create posts, uh, manage comments, and all that, and categories. Um, but the end users that are in the contribute group or visitor group, they will only see the uh, post. They can't do anything with them. So I'm going to manage categories. I'm going to add a couple. So I, the default categories is ideas, opinions, events. All right, I'm going to create one called uh, Outlook 2016. I don't know, maybe it's a knowledge base article. So I'm going to create that. So now I'm going to create a knowledge base item. Um, how to fix this issue. Three issues here. So here's the categories. I'm going to choose Outlook. I'm going to publish. So it can be in a draft state until you're ready, and then you can click publish. And there it is. Now, if you want to, you can add screenshots uh, in this. Oh, it right now allow me to comment that, but see if I need to edit that. So if I want to insert a picture. As a screenshot of what that is. Yes. Ooh. Wow. All right. But if you have a screenshot, you can upload into SharePoint and link to it. And uh, you can insert video. If you have a video on how to fix the problem, that's really helpful. To guide their user through links to get the information, really good stuff. And uh, publish. Um, there you go. So you can start putting knowledge based articles in here and link them. Okay? And you can add more categories, stuff like that. So you have three ways to look uh, change this. I actually like the box look. This basic looks okay, but I like this box look. I like that little border. I'll put the dates here. And people can uh, like it, email it to a colleague. I don't have Yammer integrated, but you can um, add a Yammer, add to Yammer thread discussion here and another thing. So, uh, To me, you saw it took 10 minutes. Took the out-of-the-box SharePoint site collection feature called Blog. Create a subsite from it. Named it Simpa Knowledge Base or KB. Started going to town. No code. Any questions? Yes. Is it a bad idea to move your call share up to SharePoint? It depends. <laughs> As a consulting answer, it depends. Um, if it's well organized and it's the single version of the truth, it's an ideal uh, candidate. 
if 99% of other file shares is total chaos, there's no naming convention, there's multiple versions of the truth, if you bring in that in the SharePoint, you're going to create chaos because of the searching mechanism. You're going to find the multiple versions of it. Um, you're going to have limitations. Um, on a file share, you can be creative on how you work with Office documents versus in SharePoint is going to limit you in some ways um, and that type of stuff. So, But I do encourage you to take a look at your file share and see how SharePoint can solve it for you. What SharePoint does great is information architecture, <laughs> enterprise content management. It's up there in the Gardner and with all the other ECMs out there, Microsoft SharePoint's right up there with it. You can create your own categories, metadata. Another great feature that I didn't mention I should have is workflows. Workflows come with every edition of SharePoint and you can workflow uh, documents and list items and stuff like that. Um, another thing is that if you work with metadata a lot, Microsoft rewards you. Instead of creating a very creative title or how you name your files uh, with 255 character limit, you create categories in SharePoint and as you upload SharePoint and choose those categories, or I'll show you in here, another way Microsoft rewards you, I'm gonna create, I'm gonna sample, I'm just gonna create Excel because the first thing I saw, if you go into here, Info. If you put information in the title, not the title of the document, but other metadata attributes, and if you put tags, you create categories which you can link to SharePoint categories that you create. If you create these categories in SharePoint and you put this document into it, it will actually show those categories for SharePoint in here where you can choose. Um, if you fill out all these properties, Microsoft and SharePoint rewards you by once that document goes in there, SharePoint search index will index your file, but will look at your metadata within the file. If it sees other categories, other titles, it rewards you with the search results. It'll bump up. It could be number five if you just give it a basic title, but if you add these other metadata items, it'll actually bump it up in search results as number one, number two. Hmm. And it does other type of category things like that. Good question. So yes, I would recommend looking at SharePoint to manage your content, except for CAD drawings. Um, but yeah, it does a great job. And plus, um, with standard version and enterprise version, people don't know this, it's, it's an instant Windows media server. So you create what's called an asset library. Find it here. An asset library and you can call it videos so what does this mean you can upload a video uh, on premise if you have RBS remote blob storage turned on you have a 2 gig file limit if you have your traditional inline content database you can up it to 10 but it's not recommended but you can upload videos into your video library and Microsoft SharePoint knows natively how to stream that out. Hmm. Does that make sense? What kind of and, videos? What, what, what MPEG-3s, MPEG-4s, AVIs, it doesn't handle .mov. I think you can add that mime type and add that extension to on-premise, but in the cloud it doesn't know how to handle .mov, which is Apple, iTunes, yeah, QuickTime, whatever. Yeah. So you have to know your video formats, but if you, it does MPEG-4 and stuff really, really well. Um, in fact, I, if you ever need a test video, I highly recommend go to nasa.gov. They have some excellent, high quality MPEG-4s um, that you can download. It's really cool too. They crash all these space shuttles and rockets, but it's a way to upload and test videos. It's, since it's tax-based uh, payer stuff, you can upload those. But uh, it's a great way to have an instant streaming media server. It's really cool. Any other questions? Yes. So, um, can you use this as a Dropbox alternative and for external clients to access? That's a tricky question. 
SharePoint 2013, yes. Um, you have to create an extranet and enable what's called forms-based authentication. So if you're used to ASP.NET, it has what's called a membership feature. It's already a predefined way to create user accounts. And so when you create those user accounts, you give them a username, password, they log in with that. They can go into your SharePoint site, what's called FBA. Now with OAuth and with SharePoint Online and SharePoint 2016, you can extend to those other external providers. So if they have Facebook, Outlook.com, their own Office 365 you can federate, they can log in with those credentials into your site and work with that data. Also, you have OneDrive. OneDrive is your My Sites now for SharePoint 2016 and especially SharePoint Online. So if you go to, I'm going to show you, with Office 365, if I go to OneDrive, you saw it for a quick second, but you see it's how it says hyphen my SharePoint.com. OneDrive for business and Delve is now your My Site. So that's another way. So let's say you don't want to put in SharePoint. You don't want them in to see all your other data, like your calendar and your list, but you have sensitive information. That's why Microsoft is now leveraged OneDrive, so you can create a folder, share that folder just for that particular user or users that have OAuth-based accounts. Good question. Oh, I'm sorry. I can talk all night. So. No, no. I'm glad, all right. I'm glad it's going so long. Any questions? Like I said, uh, I'll have a lot of this information on my site on how to create a maintenance calendar. I didn't get a chance to get to the contact list, but I'll have a guide on how you can create one, how you can sync it. Um, the link, uh, the knowledge base, and uh, if you want access to the Sandbox site, email me. Make sure it's an Outlook, Gmail, or something like that. I'll give you access to the site. You can, guys, it's a Sandbox. I don't care what you do with it. I'll, I will cap you on data, so it's not an instant file storage or Dropbox. <laughs> so, <laughs> comments, questions, concern? I want to thank, thank you for inviting thank me out Tom. tonight, and thank you for this opportunity to talk SharePoint. So thank you. Uh, thanks, everybody. Be careful driving home, and uh, see you next time. Thanks a lot. Hey, thank you. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah.